Welcome to Devil's Thumb Ranch, Winter Park, Colorado, for the first of two races in the 5430 Winter Triathlon Series, directed by Barry Sith. So, getting the last of the wax out of there, trying to get fast skis in cold conditions. Basically, as little wax basically as you can get on them, it's going to be a fast ski. I'm running about 10 or 12 PSI right now, so you can see it's very soft. If I push down hard, you're going to see the tire deform a lot. That's the kind of pressure you need. Most people are going to make a mistake of having their tire pressure way too high. That's going to be a critical, critical error. Getting a little cushioning for out there on the on the trails. They just said we had to lower our tire pressure to between 13 and 15. That's not very much air. We've got these little uh, <laughs> so not, like, hand warmers in our shoes so they're not frozen blocks in a cooler. With temperatures hovering around zero degrees Fahrenheit with wind out on the course, Barry Siff sent the racers off on the 5K run loop 30 minutes later than anticipated start time. And heading out onto the 5K run, over 85 participants move in the Winter Park's left field for the first of two laps on the 5K run. The first of two laps belonged to Durango's Daniel Arada, who took out the early lead over Xterra star Brian Smith right. and Josiah Middow. In the first of two laps, Middow, who finished fourth place at Xterra World Championships in Maui, Hawaii back in October, followed closely behind Arada, and only seconds behind Middow was Xterra Milwaukee champion Brian Smith from Gunnison, Colorado. The smaller chase group included Michael Closure, and only seconds behind Closure was Boulder's Peter Valentich. Valentich was followed by Inside Triathlon's Lars Fenanger. Fenanger was followed by a group of chase runners, which included 24 Hours mountain biker Nat Ross. Heading out onto the second of the two laps in the left field parking lot, Josiah Middow was in reach of passing Daniel Arada. Smith and Closure maintained close distance behind, with Valentick hovering only seconds behind. Emily Fenanger led Heather Best on the first lap. Best came all the way from Fairbanks, Alaska to compete in the January 14th event, and in tow was U.S. Winter Triathlon coach Neil Henderson. In heading into the transition after the first loop of the run, Emily Fenanger was passed by Heather Best to overtake the women's lead. And it was bang bang coming into the running transition with Nadal leading Arada by only two seconds, completing the 5K run in 23 minutes and 45 seconds, a little bit slower than his usual pace. Arada finished the run with 23 minutes and 47 seconds. And Nadal and the other competitors were definitely feeling those numb fingers and toes as transitions are much slower than in summer triathlon as the athletes headed out onto the 7.5k mountain bike ride on hard packed snow. And heading out onto the bike, Nadal and Arata showed just how tough the transitions can be in winter triathlon. Wearing race bib number one, Closure showed why he was the race favorite as his transition onto the mountain bike was smooth. And just over a minute behind the leading racers, Brian Smith and Peter Valentich followed. And winter triathletes will use any method possible to keep their fingers and toes warm throughout the mountain bike race. Seven. 
and while some athletes had a difficult time mounting the bike, others made it seamless and smooth. And although being passed on the end of the first lap, Emily Finanger retained her lead and led the women into transition one, with Best closely following. How's it going out there? Good. Having fun? Yeah. Awesome. This might be my longest leg right here. <laughs> the winter triathlon is for both old and young. As 14-year-old Christian Closer, son of Michael Closer, showed that even the youngest of athletes can compete a winter triathlon. The little Closer hopped on his bike and made an effortless transition just like his dad. Brian Smith, a member of the Trek Volkswagen professional mountain bike team, solidified his lead on the bike portion, biking the fastest 23 minutes, 25 second, 7.5K mountain bike loop. That's, that's Brian, Tim, some Gunnison followed closely by Pete Valentak from Boulder. Good job, guys. But breathing down Smith's neck was Valentin, who had an impressive bike to finish with the second fastest split in 23 minutes and 47 seconds. And a faster transition onto the skis left Valentin in first place with Smith behind. Out on the bike course, Nadal, who's usually one of the best bikers on the Xterra circuit, came in five minutes slower than the leaders on the bike and left onto the ski over two minutes behind. <laughs> and instead of Valentik, it was Smith who regained the lead on the ski after Valentik lost a pole only a few hundred meters after the transition. And Smith would carry the lead all the way into the finish. And after taking the lead on the 7.5K mountain bike, it was Heather Best from Fairbanks, Alaska, who solidified her lead on the ski and crossed the finish line in first place for the winner. Yeah. I'll, so. I'll take your bib off, yeah. Once you catch, catch your breath. Okay, we've got Pete Valenta coming in here. He had a few problems on the ski, we hear, for a strong second place. We've got Josiah Midoff from Vail coming in third here, one of the best Xterra triathletes in the world. Breezy at the end there. The bike was so tough it was hard to not overheat. And Barry Siff's 5430 sports event on January 14th was only a tune up as the real test comes on February 4th, where athletes from all over the United States will come to Devil's Ranch in Winter Park, Colorado for the U.S. National Championship which also serves as the International Triathlon Union's Pan American Championship race. To find out more on this race, go to 5430sports.com and make sure to check back at InsideTri.com for all the video highlights.